Halli, hallo. No, you might stay down there. Just uh, not, do not fall, please. Not so fine. Als nächstes auf der Bühne haben wir Steve Jones von Amica. Amica. Sie nennen sich eine Heimat für die Amiga und Retro Hardware Fans, bekannt für das Checkmate Digital Checkmate Digital A1500, Siamese System, High Q Tower und andere. Was als nächstes, das wird uns Steve hoffentlich erzählen. Next on stage ist Steve Jones von Amica. Amica, a home for the Amiga and Retro Hardware Fan, well known for the Checkmate Digital and Siamese System, High Q Tower and other. It, it's your stage now. Try this one, it should work. Thank you. Oh, ah, perfect. Ah, that's it, so I've got to keep this up here. Thank you very much for, for listening. Um, how many of you have seen some of my videos? Okay, so you know I waffle a bit. So um, I'll try, if I speak too quick, um, to just shout, okay? I've had to write some notes because there's a few things I want to get out. <clears throat> so um, for those who don't know my history, I started in Uh, 1989, actually it was 88, but we was actually shipped this product in 1989, um, which I had a few little problems with Commodore, as some of you may be aware, and uh, if any of you are interested in the story, it's in David Pleasance's book. Um, the one thing that people don't know is that uh, just after that, we developed this bus board and we was going to make a tower. This is, this is the end of 1989, and as you can see, it had everything CPU slots, Zorro, Zorro 2 slots, video slot, had everything. So that was going to be launched uh, by a company called Innovatronics in America for the video toasters so they could put 500s in and have continuation of supply. Uh, unfortunately, Innovatronics went bust. So that product sadly didn't uh, come forward. Uh, could we go to the next one? Yeah, can you switch? That's it, thank you. So. Um, One, uh, I, I, I say to a lot of people that I love, I know it sounds a bit, yeah, 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 but I actually really do like the German market. And the reason for this is that when I was trying to sell the Amiga seriously, my own home country of the UK, uh, were really only playing games. But the German market were serious and you were doing serious things. So it was really nice to come over here. Now, um, I don't know how many remember this because this is about 1994-95 and it allowed the Amiga to join with a PC which a lot of people were using um, and share devices etc etc. So that was uh, probably the most quite fundamental product. Um, it, didn't, it didn't get to where it really wanted to go in the future but you'll see that in a second. So can I skip forward please? <coughs> okay so how many of you have seen this? Uh, one. Okay, so 1990, I'm probably getting off a to topic here, but very briefly. Um, this was called the PCI Amiga card. The card was developed by Mick Tinker. Um, he called it the inside out, but we changed the name. But the idea was, if, if any of you know, uh, Gateway bought the Amiga. And what's probably not known is that we were in the background. We had a, an agreement with Gateway to put this into all of their PCs so that, admittedly, so their PCs could run the Mac emulator. But it would also mean the Amiga would be on there. So we had this vision of three platforms on one PC at the time. And the plan was then, if this was successful, was then to port to x86. Now, bear in mind, this is 99-ish. Uh, unfortunately, uh, due to Gateway pulled the plug. So this thing never saw the light of day, and this, uh, get, that's covered in uh, David's book as well. Um, so uh, once, once that crashed, sadly things for me went a bit pear-shaped, um, so I disappeared for 10 years. Um, so if we can switch. So 10 years later in 2008, um, I, I, I got rid of all my Amigas. I'll tell you the story another time if you want to hear it, but I kept my 1000 because I loved it so much. And, uh, I, but I'd stuck it in a garage. And I pulled it out in 2008, and I, oh, I set it all up, cleaned it, it worked first time, it was fantastic. And so I've, I've got my love back again. But I found AROS developed on x86, and it was doing exactly what I wanted to do 10 years, nine years before. And it was almost perfect. So I did 60 videos, I did a whole lot of uh, the videos, and. Um, I got very involved in driver development for AROS. Um, we also, if you can skip, for, yeah, uh, we also, it's very hard to see this picture, I apologize, but we, we launched this 
small thing called the Imeka, the Imeka Silent, and it was 200 pounds. It had an Intel Atom on board, but I paid for all the drivers, so it was fully supported. Graphics, 3D, sound, network, everything. E even the Wi-Fi worked. And we shipped, we shipped about 20. Uh, so it was an experiment, but at 200 pounds. But that was 10 years ago when things were a lot more quiet, not like it is now. I think that might be a killer now. Um, so the rest of it, you, some of you may know my ups and downs with Commodore. Does anyone know about the Commodore 1500 in the UK? No, that's good. Yeah, OK. So uh, if you've got David's book, read it. They didn't like us using the 1500 name, so, but read that in there. Right, um, so that's, that's uh, the history. Uh, now I want to go to the bit that uh, is interesting. Can you s skip to the video and play? Hopefully there'll be sound. See if you remember this. Okay, and go to the next. Oh, thank you. Okay. So that was, uh, some of you may not have seen that. Some of you may be absolutely sick of it because it was played all the time, that video. Um, okay, so the, that's it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so it was launched in uh, uh, August the 28th last year and funded on the t <coughs> October the 2nd. Um, now, I d we, ch we, we jumped over the target. We got about 118%, so that, which is fantastic. And I thank... Uh, Anyone, hands up who bought a case? Oh, there's, there's more, yeah, a lot of people bought in. It's been fantastic seeing you all. So uh, it would never have happened without people buying this case. So, but I do want to thank some people who helped me with this. So um, first, I don't know if Paul's around. He really gets embarrassed. So, but um, he did all the 3D graphics for this project. But this graphic was done by Vasily, and I, I'm going to get his name. I'm try and pronounce it, Vasily Samiridis, who is a Greek artist. And he did this graphic. He did all the early graphics as well. I did the early renders. But what we did was then Paul came in. So I want to thank Vasily greatly. And then Paul, can you skip to the next one, please? Um, Paul came in and, OK, so he's still there. Uh, <clears throat> Paul Kitchen did all the 3D renders, which you can see all over the place. Uh, again, this is another Vasily one. So they were done, but then Paul, as we got further into the project, Paul did all the 3D renders, which is what really sold it. Um, can we skip to the next one? <clears throat> I also want to thank, now this, is, now this is really important. There's more people involved than this, okay, a lot more. Um, but I, I, I want to pull, pull out, obviously my wife had been very supportive, okay. You wouldn't believe I'm working, I finished my day job, put the baby to bed. 7 o'clock go to the office, 2 o'clock in the morning I'm working building cases. So she's been absolutely wonderful. So if you ever see her, say thanks. Uh, Phil South, some may know him if you've been around as long as I have. Journalist from back in the day. Uh, he's been helping me with the manuals and all kinds of things. Um, Rob Cranley, I really want to point this guy out. He, uh, he's done all the electronics. Okay, yeah, and we have had a couple of issues which we've resolved, but uh, well, one we haven't resolved, 
but he's done some fantastic work and I, and I love this guy and you wouldn't have it without Rob Cranley because it doesn't work without the electronics. And they were fairly basic but he, he's very, very important. Um, Erwin Lindemann, who may not be here, I don't know if he is. Uh, he, oh, there's Paul, look, wave at Paul. Um, Erwin Lindemann did the, uh, oh, it's not his name, it's his Facebook name, isn't it? Um, he, uh, he did the uh, translation to the German for me on the manual and I, I will briefly say, the reasons I did a German manual is something I said earlier on, that the German market, if you, this product, if you ever come and see it, you'll see it's, everything's translated to German. We had it in German because it was a massive part of our market. This was a bigger success here than anywhere else in the world. So um, I don't think we sold a huge number, but it was good. And the Germans took it like crazy. So that's why I wanted to do the manual. Um, Alistair Robinson, we've got a Pi project coming soon, uh, which is sim very similar to this. All the software is ready. It's just a case of getting it out. I was hoping to show it. No time. Um, we did run six weeks late on the project, and I apologise for that. Everyone knows it's, if you followed my discussion, my, my video blogs, you'll know it's because we had a problem with the black, the texture we chose, and when the black arrived, it, I didn't like it, and we had to change, and we, had to, we literally had to coat the, the thing, but it looks, I think everyone, everyone loves it, so I think it looks, it was worth that, but that did delay it for six weeks. Right, uh, okay, so that's that, so if we can do the next picture. Oh, okay, yeah, I forgot, yeah. Now, first thing is very important to understand here, and I'll try not to get emotional here. My beautiful son's here, um, but he's sitting here, okay? If he hadn't have come here today, I wouldn't have left him behind. I was gonna cancel my stand. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's little Alfie, and Chris is sitting down there, and hopefully he gets a bit emotional as well. Um, but Chris went, he probably doesn't even remember most of this, but he obviously lived through all the problems with Commodore, etc. and Gateway. Right, let's get on to something more. Can we get a flip to the next, next one, please? Uh, yeah, we've done that. Next one. Next. That's it, right, let's, let's leave that one there for a while. So, what are we doing for the future? So basically, as it stands at the moment, okay, I'll look, keep an eye on time. So as it stands at the moment, uh, we are, I've got about 150 cases more to ship. I've shipped about 400-ish, um, and uh, once they will be shipping, you all know about Brexit, I, I apologise for my countrymen doing Brexit. We, me and my son are both Remainers, it's very embarrassing, but there you go. Um, so we try and get the European ones out before Brexit happens, or they cancel it, or they, whatever. Um, so uh, they may come out early. So the, the answer, by the middle of November, they should all be shipped. Okay, now, that means I've got 600 sets of plastics. I always plan for a second batch. There are 600 sets of plastics, uh, 300 black, 300 white. It's really funny that the colors, it literally was straight down the middle on the orders. It was within a couple of, of, of black and white. And we had lots of people bought two cases, some bought three, two guys bought 10 and they weren't dealers, I, and, I, and I restricted I stopped them from selling them uh, until the end, until we shipped, uh, got them out, but um, one guy just bought them to make sure the thing happened. So, uh, on the next batch, um, I've opened up the, I'm gonna open the order in uh, first of November, if you do want one. Uh, there's about 200 people on the waiting list already uh, who've, who've sent me an email. Of them, I probably half want two cases um, of my, Existing backers, a lot have said they want to buy another one because they only bought one. They, or they've got the white one, they want to buy the black one. So there's possibly, I think 400 will go in the first day, two. Um, so there may not be many left. And if, um, I'm gonna try and save 100 cases for complete builds. Um, but if, if, if it goes through, I will stop it around 500 just to make sure I've got a few spare in case there's problems. So if you do want a case, a lot of people have said they want one. I know it sounds like a sales mark, it's not. Um, and also, there is, I'll come on to this in a minute, but there is a potential this may be the end of the cases, but it may, I'm hoping not. So, uh, yeah, so as I said, once I reach a certain number, probably in a couple of weeks, I will shut the ordering system down again, you won't be able to order, um, and then just go on the waiting list for the next batch. Um, okay, so let's, uh, I've got, uh, could you do the next one, please? I think it should. There you go. Right, let's go on to this. So, the last time I did a show like this, this is absolutely wonderful because I haven't done a show like this since 1997 and I went to Stockholm and uh, Petro was up on the stage and he was selling Boing Boing mats and, you know, all that kind of thing. And I got up directly after him 
And, and I basically was telling, telling people, look, you know, things aren't as, quite as rosy as it's being made out. It's, the things aren't that good. They are a lot better now. But again, I tried to show this product then, which it was 1997, so you can get the time in. We sh uh, I showed this product that it was a potential future to get into, not to stop anything else, but just a potential future to, br to broaden the market for the Amiga. Um, <coughs> so um, we wanted this card out, it was quite important. Now, uh, as you know, then I disappeared for 10 years and I came back to the Amiga scene. And when I returned, uh, you know, things, I, I missed all the red and blue wars. But I came back and there was, I came back and there was all this disagreement, I'll put it gently, and uh, rather than everyone working together. So, um, right now, I hope that over the uh, soon, at some point, the parties to do with the operating system, the rights, and everyone involved can come to an agreement and sort things out. And I'll tell you the reason why. I believe that there is a really good future for the Amiga. In the old days, it was more business. Now it's not. Now there's a massive, I'm gonna, you all know this, there's a massive retro resurgence. And everyone likes retro this, retro that. And a lot of people remember the Amiga and they want to use the Amiga. They don't always necessarily want to build a classic machine. But so I, I think that, for example, the emulation has always been great. And it's one, one section. And if we can tap into that market, then I, I, think, we're, uh, I think we're really onto something. So I'm, I'm very positive about the future. If you see how many cases I've sold, et cetera, and how many products that are out here, and some of the fantastic hardware, uh, Vampire, I mean, I know they've been working on Vampire for years, but it's come out and it's amazing. The Warp guys, the guy doing the graphics card, I'm embarrassed, I can't remember the name of it, sorry. The graphics card, there's so many great products coming out. There's a lot of hardware. I'm not sure about software yet, if it's catching up, but definitely on the hardware side. So, it's, all the signs are there. Um, right, uh, just checking my nose. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. right. So, um, can we skip, please? Hope. Next one. That's it, thank you. Right. Um, so um, I'm just going to tell you my, my small part I hope to play if, if this... I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. So um, stage one of my... I've got like a three-stage plan, okay? The first stage was make a... Oh, okay, yeah, 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 thanks. Yeah, I'm just reminding, I told you I talked too much. Right. <clears throat> So my first, I'll rattle through this. My first stage is to make the cases. The Kickstarter did that. We've got cases. You can put anything you like in it and call it an Amiga. It's fantastic. Uh, you, you decide if it's good. Uh, stage two. Um, I want to I wanna ship these cases. As you can see, it's running Amikit. This demo was going to run from my Amikit machine. But it's run, the machine can run Amikit on an x86, sell it to the retro fans. They can run all their retro game software on one platform. And it will boot into Amikit. Okay, now at the moment it's Windows. I use it on Windows because I want to run my Oculus Rift because I like VR and I develop. Um, but it can run on just as easy on Linux and we're working on a Linux one as well because I know a lot of people want to do that. So that's a kind of Trojan horse thing. But a lot of people are showing interest in this by buying a case that reminds them of when they wanted a 3000 or they wanted an Amiga, but they don't necessarily want to run the hardware. We will obviously sell the, to the classic guys, as you can see, I've got them on there, and that hence me talking to all the guys here, and I've, I've got a, de if, if you're a hardware developer uh, here, I have a developer support program, so basically, if you've got a product that you've got out and we can talk, I'll send you a case to make sure it's all working nicely. Uh, we'll go on to that. Now, my third part is uh, AROS. I'm going to do a new, uh, I did a £4,000 driver fund, but I'm launching, if the second batch sells, because obviously I've got to fund it, I'm going to launch a £10,000 driver fund for AROS across the platforms. I hope I'll pay half, and then the community can pay half, and I've already had promises of half of the money. So, uh, but it, it depends on, as I was saying, now everyone knows AROS, is, the new version is multi-core, it's got everything you need. But it can, I believe it can be like Linux. Linux has, is a core operating system, and yet you have Red Hat, you have SUSE, 
you have all these other companies making a fortune by branding their versions of AROS. Now my hope is that we can do the same thing in this community and build up and I'd like to see some of the other guys maybe using it, sharing the code, putting code back in, etc. and then have one platform, we'll work together. So that's, that's, uh, that's a key part. Right, so the final thing is, um, Again, I want to thank Chris for coming. I want to thank all my backers. I want to thank you two for sitting there listening to me waffle. I did do quite a short one this time, I think, so it's a bit of a miracle for me. But I do want to say that I'm hoping that we can resolve these problems and so that developers like myself, hardware, especially hardware developers, have a central source we can go to and we can say, I need to buy some licenses of the operating system and know that it's all okay, everything's fine. Some may want to use the brand, some may not, but then there's a, a, a path forward and hopefully just resolve this, because it's gone on for 20 years, that's stupid. Um, so I hope that happens, but you know, there'll be maybe more, I don't know. Um, but that's why it's now, oh, it's a key point. If that doesn't happen, there will be no more cases. And that's the truth, because I'm, I'm working my ass off building these cases. I'm going to spend another three months working my ass off building these cases. I'm going to get to 1,200, and, if this, and it's not meant to be a threat. It's, it's just the reality that I can't continue doing this, this. I either have to go full time or give it up. I can't continue. So if you do want a case, buy one. Um, and, and if they resolve it, then I can put in these other plans into place and we can, I'm going to go out to the outside world, outside the Amiga community and literally bang, 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 all the big shows and try and get them into the Amiga, but I can't do it unless there's resolution. So that's it. Uh, I did have a video, but I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to play it. Um, it was actually uh, the Babylon 5 speech where he gets upset and gets everyone, we can work together, all that crap. So we'll call it the end. Uh, is there any questions, briefly? Three minutes. Three minutes. Oh, I've got, okay, yeah, yeah. We have noch three minutes. Will someone Steve noch eine Frage stellen? A question for Steve? Someone? They're all very shy. Oh, yeah, behind you. Oh. I have a question about the difficulties with Commodore at the time. <laughs> did, you, did you now sit down with David Pleasant, like Lester Day or maybe, and said, look, you know, let's... Uh, it's very important that David Pleasance was nothing to do with um, the problems. Fine, I'm not that. I no, don't no, 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 no. That was, that was either Kelly Sumner or Kieran Sumner, I don't know which of them. Uh, that was nothing to do with it. In fact, David knew nothing about it. And when he wrote his book, I said, do you want to put the truth in? Why you did that case? And he was very kind. I expect him to put a little correction. He put my entire thing I wrote called The Love Letter to A. Ross. He put the whole thing in. So David's been fantastic and I love him a bit. So yeah. Noch jemand? Frage, Frage. Biola, Biola. Jemand? Ah, yes, hello. Uh, <coughs> regarding the Kickstarter, um, are you happy with uh, the yeah, with the process and so on? Um, I saw some email from you that you have problems with some person they don't pay and and so on. Uh, oh yeah, no, no, no. Okay. The, um, None of my, I have no problem with the payment as such. I'll clarify that. Um, what happened was that um, some people, because uh, some of you know there was you pay for, the Kickstarter was to pay for the case, but because it was going all around the world and this is a great big box, we had to do plus shipping. We couldn't include the shipping. So we, it was plus shipping and then there was extras. I was shocked the amount of extras nearly doubled the value of the, the project. But key point was that a number of people, it originally was about, 50 people had not filled in the details and had not finalized it and paid it was only the shipping and they hadn't finalized it so i was trying to chase people can you do it because i, I had to get that sorted out so i could ship them um, so it was never i was upset with anyone um, but it was just literally so sometimes they lost they didn't get the emails at all so it was just it was just one of those things and i just maybe I, if i sounded a bit i was frustrated because i, I just needed to get this finished i didn't want any hold-ups so it, there was no problem Eine Frage? Noch jemand eine Frage? Last question? Perfect, then Steve. No one else? Thank you very much. Thank you.